Joel, thank you so much for joining CEO Wise. Dan, pleasure, man. Nice to be chatting. Thank you. Now, you've uh, um, m most people know you for your winning drop kick in the '95 World Cup. Now, um, and also you're commentating with the rugby, but not many people know that you're an accomplished mm. entrepreneur and businessman with with uh, nine businesses. Now, before we get into that and, and about Pivotal Group, um, take me back to your journey, your career journey from the '95 World Cup until. 2012 when you uh, started Pivotal? Yeah, so I think it, it, it was probably quite a long learning curve is the best way to describe it. You don't just you know, come out of a rugby career and think you're equipped to go into the next part of life. You, you have to decide what that life needs to be about, where your focus is going to be, and then you've got to learn how to apply yourself to that life. And I think for me that's exactly what it was. I, I carried on playing for a while. I played in the UK and coached and managed a little bit, and I think that obviously helped a little bit, managing people. Um, and then things went a little pear-shaped on that side and uh, you know I considered a move to another club as head coach didn't quite work out and I just decided you know the coaching game is not for me uh, and I wanted to come home so we, we came home and and right from the get-go I, I got involved in a few entrepreneurial businesses um, and then I don't know through whatever reason I en ended up into the corporate space which was wonderful because it's the best learning curve yeah. of all you know if you're in the the, the corporate world, you learn about governance, you learn about procedure and process and and little things that ultimately make you a better entrepreneur when you mm -hmm. when you head on back. So so I learned enormously. I had a wonderful time, especially because of the fact that it was based in sport. I had a wonderful time at Megapro with George Rotenbach and what a great mentor he was to me in, in the world of sport, the commercial side of sport. I, I had a you know a, a role to play in Cricket World Cup that was here in 2003. I managed all the hospitality. I looked after South African rugby's mm. commercial rights. I helped with some little parts of the bid book for 2010 Soccer World Cup. So, so there was a whole lot of this l this long learning curve that that eventually led me to a place where I felt again that I was equipped to go out and become a little bit more entrepreneurial. And then, uh, as you as you know, 2011, 2012 came, and it was time and uh, <coughs> things just worked out as they did and we started our first business and moved in here about a year later so it's interesting journey but very much a learning curve okay and, and what exactly does the pivotal group do <coughs> so 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 we started this business as pivotal capital thinking we would be a venture capital business we've never <laughs> really exited anything so we've, we're very much a holding structure i think the core of our focus initially was was data we, we realized that there was a you know there was huge scope in data but then poppy and and other governance laws came into being which really prohibit the sale of data and the use of data yeah. without opt-ins. So we changed our focus a little towards the, the more disruptive side of technology. And that's really where we are. You know, we, we started with a company called OneVault, which is voice authentication, voice biometrics. We then started building and managing call centers and mainly the technology side. We built our own fully hosted telephony platform, um, which is absolutely everything from a bog standard telephone on a desk to the most sophisticated call center solution mm -hmm. we um we acquired a couple of our service providers so for our sins we we have a small security business and a small cleaning business and i say small but we you know it's, it's people intensive yeah um we uh we have a software as a service sales business um analytics and then probably most recently we started a business in the uh, the recruitment space. We have a, an artificial intelligence recruitment solution that yeah. that uh, really is. We own the IP two globally, and and it's it's um, it's a it's like any startup. It's a long, slow, hard yeah. process. But I've 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 no I've no doubt that it will probably become mm. our most successful venture to date. Well, I think it's evident here yeah, with, with the, your, your your infrastructure. I mean, you've got a good thing going. Yeah, we've got a good thing going, and we've got we've got a, a nice, comfortable office and. Um, We've got good people, and I know the first thing that impressed you as a fellow cyclist <laughs> was our barrister and our Absolutely. coffee. Absolutely. <laughs> so, and that's probably you know when we when when Paul Hutton and I first started talking about starting our business and and heading out of the corporate world together, which is we did, and then Bruce joined us, and then our attorney as the fourth shareholder, and Lisa as uh, minority shares. Um, but we had, we had a discussion, and, and there were two or three things. There were three things that I remember distinctly that we we said were were, were pivotal. Excuse the pun to our business. <laughs> Yeah. One is, we wanted to watch our kids play sport in the afternoons. That's awesome. Two, we, we never wanted to fill in another leave form. <laughs> and three, we, we wanted to drink real coffee. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's, that's sort of the way the, the partners have, you know, that's the ethos and culture we've yeah. tried to drive 
And you also mentioned that you you, you have um, pivotal talent, which is using yeah. artificial intelligence, which is your side. Yeah. Um, what is it, that about? So so it is it's an artificial intelligence solution that's dependent on data analytics as well. And mm. I think that you know we refer to it more as an augmented solution now, okay. augmented intelligence. But really, what it does is it um, it screens matches and ranks candidates against a set job profile or number of profiles and. Mm and uh, it's based on a multidisciplinary platform so it works across all elements of the human behavioral sciences and it works most importantly on the predictors of performance so it will predict whether dan newman is going to be a good blogger <laughs> and a social internet guru um, or whether he's not but artificial intelligence that's getting into a scary place it I mean, is with facebook recently uh, stopping their, their project because the machines started to talk to each other or created their own language if you teach something to teach itself Ultimately, it is going to have the ability to to supersede humans at human ability because we don't use all of our brain. You know, we're no. not equipped to, or we're not designed to use the whole functionality where a, a robot is. Yeah, and, and, and it is quite threatening at times. But but yeah. like everything, if you use it right, it's going to be hugely successful. Yeah. But I think as long as the human has the last say on things, the yeah. last off button. Yeah, you know. as long as you, there's a button that yeah, you exactly. can turn it off. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, what? Um, what are the challenges that you've had that you've overcome? What are the biggest lessons that you've learned to overcome in your current business? So, so all our businesses have been in the startup side of business. You know, we, we, we've never, aside from the security and cleaning business, we've never gone and acquired a business. Everything else we've started from scratch. And I think startups come with massive cash flow challenges. Um, you, you know, we had private investors in our first business and they're still involved. They still are investors in, in our business. But even that business, as well capitalized as it was, had has had its cash flow issues over, yeah. over time. All startups have that. So, you know, the lessons I've probably learned, most importantly, coming out of a corporate life where c capital is never really that big a concern for employees, maybe for the shareholders and the owners yeah. and the listed entity. It's 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 uh, the the CFO probably. But but for the rest of us, you just go about your daily business. Mm -hmm. In in our space, cash flow is is king. You know yeah. you. Yeah, and I think that that is the most difficult thing is cash flow when you start yeah. your business, you know, because all you're doing is trying to meet monthly expenses. Exactly, know? and the biggest expense is people, you know, and that'd exactly. probably be the, the 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 next biggest thing is that I've always had this little belief that you you can have a really great business concept and great idea, and with average people you'll fail. Yeah, but if you have an average idea with great people, you can make it into a raging success. Yeah. So it's, it is about the people, and, and probably to that point on cash flow is, is, is in, a, in, a dis in a disruptive business, in a startup game, you can't carry excess baggage, you can't carry people who are not 100% in, yeah. that are not you know, committed, that are not doing their jobs yeah. and, and delivering value. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we at times have had to get rid of people, which has been really sad, yeah. um, but very few. You know, we've been lucky in the way we've put together teams that have, that have helped drive our businesses forward.